Hi, Cinex Movies here. Today I'll be showing you a 2023 action thriller American film that features a skillful pilot who tries to save his passengers from a lightning strike and a hostage situation. Relax and enjoy. On New Year's Eve, Brody Torrance, a single dad and the captain to fly the plane, Trailblazer 119, appears to be in a hurry to meet up with his flight from Singapore to Tokyo. In the process, he is on a video call with his daughter, Daniela, who's in college in California and reminds him of their rendezvous on New Year's Day as a family. Torrance promises to be on time for her and they end their call as he clears his bag. Captain Torrance meets his co-pilot, Samuel Deli from Hong Kong, a rather easygoing guy who has a picture of his family pinned to a spot he or Torrance could see. Turns out Captain Torrance is Scottish, but he spent a lot of time with the English folks. Torrance tells Samuel about his daughter too, as they exchange pleasantries. Captain Torrance prepares for takeoff with his partner, but it looks like the weather isn't fair enough for their flight. Torrance is made to understand that there are not so many passengers on board, so they'll need to navigate through the bad weather over the South China Sea. Bonnie, the chief flight attendant, comes in to introduce herself to Torrance and his partner and announces that Captain Brody's presence was needed at the jetway. At the jetway, it is brought to his notice that he'd be flying a murderer in cuffs, Louis Gaspar who would be under close monitoring by the officer handling him, Officer Shellback convicted of a homicide attack 15 years ago. The captain is unsure about flying him, but he's left with no choice. All passengers are checked in, and the flight takes off after a brief announcement by Captain Torrance and Bonnie. The journey starts off smoothly, with the rest of the passengers looking suspiciously at the isolated man in handcuffs, Lewis, under the police officer's watch. Some ladies even attempt to take pictures of him, but are warned to desist from the act. Torrance and Samuel, his co-pilot, talk a little. It was then Torrance revealed he lost his wife about three years ago. As predicted, they encounter a storm and their plane gets struck by lightning. They lose signal, light and communication in the plane all at once, causing chaos in the plane. This leaves Torrance with an injury to his head when he goes to check on his passengers. Captain Torrance manages to save his passengers from the lightning by making a risky landing on a war-torn island, only to find out that surviving the landing was only just the beginning. Brody works with Samuel and Bonnie to calm the passengers and reassure them that they were all going to be alright. All he needed to do was to find a means of communication as they were off radar. Samuel tells Brody that the Holo Island where they're located is operated by violent separatists, meaning the longer they stay, the higher their chance of being at risk. He puts Samuel, his co-pilot in charge, as he goes to find help taking Lewis along in a bid to secure the passengers from him due to his violent history. This would require him to free Lewis from the handcuffs that had been on him throughout the flight. News reaches Jumar, leader of the rebel group, about the presence of the passengers and their plane on their island. In New York City, at Trailblazers headquarters, the board of directors met by their crisis manager, Scarsdale tried to locate the plane and passengers. Scarsdale decides to send a private military team to rescue everyone on the island since they are now aware of the threat situation on the island. As Torrance and Lewis make their way through the jungle, Torrance and Lewis have a little chit-chat, and it turns out Lewis was once in the military following the knife Torrance discovered with the now dead police officer. It turns out that Captain Torrance took the officer's gun, but was unable to provide an answer when Lewis asked if he brought it along. This makes Lewis disappear for a while. Torrance is able to locate an isolated building and finds a telephone he only manages to connect to Trailblazer headquarters, but the lady over the phone will not believe he's saying the truth, requesting his badge number. Unfortunately, he already changed clothes and he's not in his uniform, but he still tries to convince the lady until the lines are abruptly cut off. Sounding rather frustrated, he decides to call his daughter instead, and he's able to reveal they were on the Holo Island before he is attacked by a rebel. Lewis comes to his rescue after a tough battle and kills the rebel. Upon further inspection of the building, Torrance and Lewis discover that the rebels used the area to torture and videotape their victims for ransom money. Alarmed by this new information, the two rush back to the plane but find that the rebels already made it there. The rebels, led by Jumar, arrive at the place where the passengers and the rest of the crew members were. The passengers are happy that help has finally come, unknown to them, they just met their Waterloo. One of the rebels asks for the pilot, Samuel presents himself as the one, but the rebel still not satisfied asks for the list of passengers. Bonnie manages to present it to him out of fear for her life. A Korean woman attempts to escape but is shot, sending so much fear through the spine of the passengers. The husband is then brutally beheaded just as he expresses his grief over the loss of his wife. The rebels proceed to take everyone else hostage while Torrance and Lewis hide much to Torrance's disgust. Lewis wouldn't let him confront the rebels without a plan. Once the rebels leave, the two subdue a remaining rebel searching the passengers' stuff and find out Jumar is taking them to a nearby village. They both resolve to rescue everyone. 
Torrance, though, leaves a message for anyone who would peradventure find them with an inscription on his shirt pinned to the plane with his ID. At the village, Jumar forces the hostages to state their names and nationality for their ransom video. The military men arrive on the island, but find nobody near the plane, only the bodies of Shellback, the officer and the stewardess, and along with a message from Brody. Brody and Lewis make it to the village and kill some more rebels before locating and freeing the hostages. Everyone gets boarded onto a bus, while Brody decides to offer himself up to the rebels so the others can escape, since it looks like they might not be able to overpower them. Junmar and his men beat him and prepare to execute him, but the military team shows up just in time and begins to open fire on the rebels, killing a good number of them. After the fight, Junmar finds his brother among the dead, driving his cause against the others to take things more personal. The military men inform Brody that they'd only help with what they've got, as any other help will get up to about 24 hours before arriving. And from the looks of things, they're greatly outnumbered by the rebels and may not survive them. So he asks Brody what they should do. Brody has an idea. Samuel managed to fix the plane's battery before the rebels arrived, and so the one thing that can get all of them out of the place at the same time is the plane. The passengers are reluctant, but he tries to convince them to trust him on this, as it's the only option they've got to escape. Brody tells the military team to help him by time while he tries to fix the plane tires. One of the passengers in the process and Brody sustains a gunshot injury in his leg. Although the Trailblazer board argue about Brody flying the plane as it's so damaged and could kill everyone on it, Scarsdale makes the bold decision to further give him directives on how to fly. Lewis joins the military men as they fight the rebels, and Lewis chooses to remain on the island since he has no future going back, and he finds a bag of ransom money. With most of the rebels dead, Brody and Samuel make an effort to get the plane moving. Junmar attempts to fire an RPG at the plane, but Brody lifts it high enough in the air that he kills Junmar by smashing into him with the plane's wheels, much to Lewis's delight. Brody then plans to land at a nearby airstrip in Siasi with the amount of fuel they have left. After a bit of turbulence, Brody can safely land, causing everyone at HQ to cheer. Brody becomes quite emotional, trying to take it all in, sits for a while and then calls his daughter, Daniela to tell her he'd be coming home, although a bit late like she earlier said. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, kindly leave a comment telling us what movies you'd like us to recap. Also subscribe to Cynics Movies to get more interesting videos like this. Thank you.